You're listening to the Whip Appeal Show, hosted by Mistress Candy 69 from the BDSM Alive Radio Network. Well, hello, 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 everyone. I had started exactly 7.59, so I would be live on air at exactly 8 o'clock. So... Thursday nights is the new show slot and time, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, for the Whip Appeal Show with, of course, my lovely self. Um, But, of course, I want to say Happy fucking New Year, everybody, because, you know, Mistress had taken off. Uh, I think the last show for Season 1, which, of course, now this is Season 2, I have a totally different idea for this season show, okay, Uh, Tonight, actually, we're going to be talking about bizarre fetishes. So I know in past shows I have spoken, um, you know, about like doll fetish, you know, agamotophilia. Uh, That was a, you know, a a, a big subject for like last season's show. Um, I also talked about dacrophilia, which is the fetish for watching people cry. Of course, Mistress's big, big, two personal, well, one of them is a personal fetish, and the other one is just a fetish of mine that I love to do to certain individuals when I feel it's necessary. So, to hash on one of them is Mistress's awesome, hilarious fetish, eproctophilia, the fart fetish that I have spoken so highly about in past shows. <laughs> And and the other one, of course, is my own personal foot fetish, okay? So we're going to delve about foot fetishes in a few moments, actually. Um, it's kind of interesting. I do have a few things to say uh, besides about the fetishes. Um, for anyone who was following me on Instagram under my account, the real mistress C69, Apparently, Instagram strikes again. This is now the third fucking time they've disabled my account without warning. And you know, it's quite fucked up because I never fucking post anything like filthy. Matter of fact, I'm probably one of the few dominatrixes that you'll ever see that will never, ever reveal nudity um, online, you know, anyhow. Uh, mostly. I mean, I, I am a dominatrix that, that practices CFNM, which is clothed female, naked male. So, I mean, you're never going to see me, like, naked online. But it's kind of interesting <laughs> for the fact of, like, you know, I never post anything like that. And somehow my Instagram gets taken down. And then I see these other, like, scaly, like, motherfuckers online. They're posting, like, you know, uh, explicit art, like, dicks and pussies and all kinds of shit. And, and you know, fornication-type sexual acts or, you know, violent sexual acts. And those accounts are still up and running. So, Instagram, go fuck yourself, seriously. I, I've, like, fucking had it. Like, you know, honestly, like, I have one, thank God I had the backup account, which is at, and I'm not going to say it now, because I'm sure they're going to fucking shit can that account, too, after they hear this fucking show. (laughs) How many of you out there listening to this show tonight have had your Instagram fucked with because of either a hacker or some... Instagram bullshit where you have too many followers and they disable your account because they just feel like it. Not only did they do it to me, they did it to a whole other slew of other dames that I know and other people in the industry. So Instagram, I'm going to bend over and you can kiss my fucking lily white ass. How do you like them apples? Because you fucking suck. <laughs> now Twitter, on, on the other hand, I, I'm pretty busy on Twitter. So I have to thank, I have a whole shitload of new followers uh, for this new year. So thank you to all of my new followers on Twitter, by the way. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to a couple of my really close friends that have been with me majority of my term as a dominatrix. And uh, Sir Lorenzo, 
uh, Casey Carter, uh, Rita Daniels, who is home recovering. I, I hope you're doing well because, you know, a lot of people have been asking when you're going to be joining the network. I mean, she's joined the network. We're just waiting for her to be a little bit more uh, mobile so she can, um, you know, move around while she does her radio show. So, uh, which I actually will play her introduction in a few minutes. Uh, So when Rita, if you're listening tonight, darling, Um, this is going to be really awesome. So I'm going to play the intro for Rita's show, which is called, uh, in the, in the Cougar Zone with Rita Daniels. Okay. So this, me and Sir Lorenzo had, uh, made her this and we hope she enjoys it. And it's pretty awesome, actually. Rita, I hope you enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty awesome. And every time, I'm sorry to laugh, but Lorenzo just makes me laugh when he says the whole thing of your, with pussy and cock. That's hilarious. Every single person I let listen to that, they they said it was great. They love that part. So it's, it's, it's pretty good. And uh, so I'm looking forward for her to come on. Of course, people have been emailing and asking. So, you know, she just kind of is now three months uh, post-op from her uh, neck fusion surgeries. So, you know, we got to give the lady some time. She's still in recovery. So when she comes on, she comes on. I'm, I'm, I'm totally cool with doing things my way for a little while, you know, until my, my friends come back on, which is cool. And, uh... You know, of course, I had to take some time off for some vacation, and then I also changed some things around on the on the the sites and stuff, and I kind of rechanged. Uh, I changed my my uh, logo and stuff. So you know, with some of the new photos that were taken by that photographer, um, so which was really neat, and um, and what an awesome photographer he is, by the way. His name is Jack James Photography, and he's out of Fort Wayne, New Jersey, and he is absolutely awesome. So um, look him up. He does all sorts of um, everything, like weddings, baby showers, engagements, all stuff. But he all, he wanted to uh, – he, he films bands and all kinds of famous bands and stuff. So, um, yeah, pretty neat. And um, – so yeah, he made a special trip to come see me and take a portfolio of me, which was really awesome. So thank you, Jack. That was pretty, pretty awesome. I love all those photos. And um, but anyway, so I have to thank Blitz Kid, of course. You know they're at a uh, punk band from Virginia, and they allow me to use "She Dominates" for the radio show, of course. So of course, thank you guys very, very much. It is very fitting for my show. And uh, a lot of, I hope you guys have been getting uh, new followers and uh, new fans because of it, which is pretty awesome. So, okay, we're going to delve into, oh, and by the way, the phone lines are open tonight. So uh, the phone number of the show is 516-406-3512. And, um, you know, I'm going to be discussing bizarre fetishes. Uh, of course, I'm going to talk about a foot fetish for a hot minute or two. I've been getting a lot of um, emails and new fans on Instagram and followers on Instagram telling me they have like a foot fetish, right? Now, most people in general have a, you know, a, a naked foot fetish. Then there are people that have a foot and shoe fetish. They like looking at women wearing like either open toe shoes, preferably with manicure. 
Then there are guys that really don't care about what their feet look like. They just want to see naked toes and an open toe shoe. <laughs> like, then there are guys that only want to see women's feet in sexy high heel shoes without the toes open. So there's a different variety of, of what certain people and their foot fetishes are. Uh, then I have had slaves and foot guys in the past telling me they only like looking at women's feet in nylon pantyhose. I mean, so I like, um, it, there's a very broad or a very broad, wide range of degrees of foot fetishes. So recently I had a, a fella online tell me that he has a foot fetish for particularly older women like MILF's feet, right? So then he proceeds on telling me he loves my content and, um, you know, has a, a wicked foot fetish. So I said, well, I think I have some pictures of some feet on my page, which I'm pretty sure I do. If not, I'll have to upload some, I guess. But, but the fact is, you know, it's pretty cool. I mean, I personally have a foot fetish and actually, uh, my, my, my boyfriend, actually one of the first times him and I hung out, I actually sucked on his feet, like on his toes. And he, he, I don't think he ever had like anyone do that to him. And that's actually one of my personal foot fetishes. So you have to have like really attractive feet for me to even want to suck on them in the first place. So I have some, you know, I guess quirks or um, <laughs> things about my foot fetish in general. You have to m meet certain criteria for me to want to suck on your toes, <laughs> basically. Like, if you have calluses and ingrown corns and, like, fucked up toenails, no thank you. I am not putting my mouth anywhere near those. But if you have, like, you know, like, basically, if you look like you have feet that you, like, swoop down out of the sky and catch your dinner from a lake, I am totally not sticking my mouth on your fucking toes. <laughs> Oh, that's always been, like, my favorite saying to say when people have, like, gnarly fucking toes and shit like you know? <laughs> Well, anyway, we're going to start with the bizarre fetishes. Okay. So, of course, uh, the first one. Now, let me just explain here. I have about 30 weird sexual bizarre fetishes that I'd like to discuss either on tonight's show or make it a segment of, you know, season uh, two, episode one, uh, you know, season. Then maybe next, I'll save some for next week's show where I may go into more bizarre fetishes. Because, you know, I'm trying to change things around a little bit for the upcoming season, try to think, make things more fresh. And of course, I'm still going to have people call into the show and I'm still going to like interview people and stuff, but I just want to try to make things a little bit more interesting as opposed to the same old stuff about sissy cross-dressers, which ugh, my, my, uh, after my relationship with my last one, I really only do phone domination for sissies and cross-dressers because, you know, <laughs> I've had, like, not such great luck with them in the past, quite honestly, and um, I made a promise to myself that I wouldn't really look for another submissive who was a sissy or a cross-dresser. I kind of wanted to stem away from that realm for a little bit, you know, because besides, there's other cool fetishes, like, you know, like, I like to, I, I honestly am a sadist, so I prefer a little masochist, or a masochist who's willing for mistress to kind of, like, you know, um, beat on a little bit, is a good way to put it, like, uh, you know, somebody I can, like, you know, kind of whip when, when I feel the need to, like, you know, or, or, uh, and I'm not saying use them as a punching bag, please. It's not like, this is just for me, like, to have some sort of, like, you know, BDSM type play with someone that, that, uh, you know, could deal with, like, you know, being smacked around, so to speak, you know, like, so anyway, okay. Sexual fetishism is basically, being sexually attracted to a non-living object or a body part that is not the genitalia, right? So basically, um, the object of interest is called the fetish. The person who has the fetish for the object is a fetishist. With that being explained, um, some sexual fetishes that are, that are very unbelievable, that they evoke, 
<laughs> a number of questions. Now, for instance, this first one, necrophilia. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers who's been listening to my show for the past number of years, but back in a few years back, um, I had this fella call into the show. His name was Alex the Neck. I called him Alex the Necromancer. Okay, that was his nickname. <laughs> He had called into the show numerous times for a few months and was telling myself that he was a necrophiliac and that he worked in a mortuary and he would be like, you know, checking out the bodies that would come in. Now, I don't know how true this is, but it could have been true because from what I've been told by people that have had dealings with real necrophiliacs, (laughs) they said that they usually are like very quiet and like you know, like, they have really, like, no lives except working in the morgue all freaking day and night long. So, I mean, it could have been true. But anyway, there's two fetishes on this bizarre fetish list that definitely fit this guy, Alex. So, not only was he a necrophiliac, I'm going to get in later into the other part of it. So, basically, it, the necrophilia is arousal to corpses, and people will be wondering where all these diseases are coming from. <laughs> like, so think about it. How many people do you know? Like? <laughs> so anyway, the guy Alex used to call up and he used to tell me that he was going to the cemetery. And I said, well, why are you going to the cemetery? And he also had this other fetish called lithophilia, which was arousal to stone and gravel. Now, I used to tell him that he had a gravestone humping fetish because when he used to go into the cemetery, now, he used to call me when I was on ASN Network, when when this show was, I, I should call Mike and Sherry and ask them if they still have a copy of any of those shows because, oh my God, that guy was hilarious. He used to literally call into the show every, I think it was, I was doing the shows back then, it was like a Friday or a Saturday night, and he used to call in every fucking Saturday night for like at least two or three months. Then I figured it out. He didn't want to have to pay for phone fucking sex. He was calling into the radio show and basically jerking off on air while he was at the cemetery fucking a gravestone to his lithophilia fetish, right? So basically, it's the arousal to stone and gravel. This begs the question of whether they rub their genitalia against concrete floors when they can. So basically, this guy Alex used to claim that he was laying on top of a a leaned over tombstone and he was dry humping the thing while he was telling me stories of him kind of, you know, uh, supposedly fucking dead bodies in this morgue that he worked at himself. I mean, I don't know if it was true, but I always wondered if it was true. And, and he became like part of my show for a very long period of time. But then after I told him that I figured out his deal. Like, I had his cell phone number because he would call into the show all the time. So one one time I had called him and I said, listen, you know, I think it's cool that you call in and stuff, but I think I figured out why you really call into the show. Because you you have a sexual perversion with the idea of, you know, being a necrophiliac and, a, and into lithophilia at the same time. And I think you call into the show so you get like you get to get off for free (laughs) and so he kind of laughed and then he goes but no that's not why I call and he goes well well maybe it's a big then he goes maybe it's a big part of I said listen you want to call in great but you can't call in and like be moaning on 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 air for hours like you're kind of you know like I was getting agitated with him because I fit he was it was becoming a pattern for him so then after I had said that, he stopped calling in for a while. But then, I don't know, like maybe a year later or something, he had called and he said that it was the anniversary of the first show he ever called in. And I hadn't talked to him in like a long time. So yeah, he had the necrophilia and the lithophilia, which is the arousal arousal to stone and gravel. <laughs> 
So not only does the guy fuck dead bodies, but he fucks tombstones as well. <laughs> so he's like, you know, and I really, I really have to actually now, I am, I am inspired now to contact Mike and Sherry from uh, the ASN Lifestyle <laughs> Network to have them see if they have any of those old shows archived because they are quite hilarious, I have to say. <laughs> That was probably about, let's see, how long ago was that now? That was, I think, 2017 or 2018 or something like that when that was going on. So it was very funny. So it's been a number of years now. So I don't know, Alex, if you're still listening to the show, you should call in. But don't be jerking off on my airwaves. <laughs> I, I I work at Night Flirt and talk to me if you want to call me on there and jerk off for hours. I'm quite okay with that. So anyway, um, here's another interesting uh, weird called frauderism, which is arousal to touching a stranger. <laughs> uh, like touching, this word is surreptitiously in a crowded place. Cough, cough, like side eye at men you know like you kind of like look at somebody and you kind of like you become aroused just by groping them like inappropriately in public or in a crowded place so it's called frauderism which is kind of like <laughs> that one I, I mean I've heard of people doing that kind of like perverts like groping people at like you know sex parties or or um people in like crowded places kind of you know just rubbing up against someone and not like they think it's like an accident but it's on it's really true you know so <laughs> Here, here's another very bizarre and most disgusting one now I know some people you know probably are grossed out when I talk about the proctophilia the thought fetish this fetish is totally different than eproctophilia, okay? This one is called... Oh God, this is so gross. <laughs> Wait. Oh, I can only imagine what you people are thinking right now. So it's called coprophasia, right? Which is a sexual attraction to feces. Or, or maybe it's the... Um, coprophagia which is eating doo-doo fetish which is really disgusting so if somebody tells you to go eat shit and die you might actually get excited if you have this type of fetish okay <laughs> I don't know why but this one is really disgusting but it makes me laugh I don't know what it is <laughs> so it's a re arousal to feces. Poop really arouses some people. Now, have you ever watched a movie where someone tells their lover to take a shit on them? What would you do if you were ever put in that situation, right? Now, for instance, you're going to laugh. Many, 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 many moons ago, when I was, like, training to become a dominatrix, when I was a young, young, uh, like, teenage girl... I worked in a dungeon once where I saw another dame shit on a guy's face. <laughs> okay, so I um, initially thought it was kind of disgusting. But then as I saw how this fella, not that I would do this, but I mean, I have shit on someone <laughs> before. So, I, you know, I actually did it to someone in the dungeon. They requested me to do it. Um, I've also fought it in men's faces. I've also used them as human ashtrays and human foot baths. Um, human furniture. <laughs> uh, you name it, I've pretty much done it in my career. So, I mean, I really don't do that stuff any longer. It's kind of, you know, when I was younger, I was doing a lot of different types of fetishes. Now I'm kind of grossed out by a lot of them. So, I mean... You know, and, and coprophagia uh, is actually one of them. I would never want to eat shit, nor do I want to smell shit or anything that has to do with shit. So, I mean, you know, sometimes in your life you have to kind of cut some things off. 
and like pinching a loaf. Well, I'm pinching a loaf about um, the, <laughs> the eating doo doo fetish. So, <laughs> but actually, there's there was something I had wanted to add to that. Um, it's it, most people with that fetish enjoy watching others go number two. So it's also a, a voyeuristic aspect where you like. You're into that fetish, but you like watching people take a shit on somebody. You're not, usually not the one who likes being shit on unless you like, all right, it's coprophilia is the sexual attraction to feces, to shit. So <laughs> when you have coprophagia, which is a sexual fetish of eating doo-doo, so two girls, one cup, as they say, um, it's disgusting, whatever. <laughs> I don't really care for it, but... It's a bizarre fetish, and there are people, believe it or not, who are into it, okay? So if you are, kudos to you, um, add some sprinkles into it, and use a clean spoon. That's all I'm going to say. I particularly, one, don't care for it, okay? Now, here's another interesting and maybe bizarre type of fetish that, you know, <laughs> this, the the next two are quite, disturbing but I guess <laughs> they're there and people talk about them and I've actually seen people on FetLife talk about them so the first one is called Hobophilia which is a, a sexual fantasies with homeless people <laughs> believe it or not you know Think about this type of scenario, okay? <laughs> Whoever the person is with the hobophilia is walking around New York City and they see a bunch of bums or homeless people on the side and they kind of go up to them and say, you know, hey, you know, they're aroused or whatever. They try to, you know, have sex with this, you know, um, person and they go, hey, want to go back to your place? Oh, sorry, I don't have a, a, a place. <laughs> so like, you know... What do you do in that situation? But it's true. There are people that have sexual fantasies about having sex with homeless people, believe it or not. I actually saw something about it on Netflix like a couple of months back. So I was on that like weird fetish show that was like on television or whatever, right? So like, and then the next one that I would like to discuss is... Now, this one is even fucking better, or is it funny, or is it just eh? So, I hope that when you guys are, and girls are listening to this show, you give me some feedback about the different types of fetishes that I'm going over the show. You could always message me on Instagram at the real mistress candy 69 and um, Facebook and excuse me, Facebook, I'm, I'm on, but I'm kind of banned for 24 hours. <laughs> Put it this way, I had an incident that I, I'll have to get into it on, on a lighter note later, but whatever. Some Somebody did something rotten to me and I wrote something about them and I wrote like a violent, or Facebook said it was a violent comment. So I, I'm banned from Facebook for like 24 hours, so I can't post or like anything. So um, even on the Whip Appeal show and my mistress page on Facebook. So um, yeah, so thank goodness I did all my social media posting a few days prior. <laughs> but you could also message me on there and telling me if you like any of the fetishes or do you have any experience with any of the fetishes or have you even heard of them for that matter? And maybe it's good that you listen to my show tonight because you can actually learn something for once. Ha ha, only kidding. All right, so the next one, this is the one that I was kind of giggling over. <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's called abaziophiliacs, right? They are into leg braces or other orthopedic appliances. So now, okay, here's a food for thought. You know the, the first half of the movie Forrest Gump? <laughs> Think about people who have a sexual fetishism to leg braces, right? Or any type of orthopedic casting or bracing. So imagine people with this type of fetish 
walking around outside in public, preferably like, you know, at like, you know, everywhere. And people, there are people everywhere with all sorts of leg braces on. Can you imagine? You must have a chronic woody or creaming in your panties if you're seeing people walking around like this. Or is it something that turns you on and then you go home and masturbate to this type of fetish? Or do you watch like, I don't know, do you watch like movies with geriatrics and like leg braces? I mean, I don't know. Like, is it is there an age limit with the abazophiliacs, right? <clears throat> this is kind of like in the same field as necrophiliac, but these are actually living people that have, you know, leg braces on. <laughs> So, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't think I've, I've heard of some of these, not all of them. These are more, like more bizarre type stuff. So, here's one that uh, is kind of interesting. It's called Tripsolagenics, which is, okay, Tripsolagenics, which are aroused by having their hair shampooed. These people can go basically into any hair salon and get their hair washed, and it's basically like visiting a rub and tug. Like, so they go into these places to get, like, their hair washed, and they're basically, like, having an orgasm in their pants. So, I mean, it's a pretty interesting fetish. And I don't know, I mean, I like a good hair wash by a, a hair salon, but it doesn't make me, like, feel aroused. I think, if anything, it makes me feel pretty relaxed. I'm I'm not talking about, like, you know, wishing I had someone, like, you know, playing with my, you know, private parts while I was getting a shampoo. But, <clears throat> you know, it takes all fucking kinds, let me tell you. <laughs> so remember that. The next time you're at the hair salon or the barber... You could possibly be a tripsola geniac, right? It's like a, a, a tripsola maniac, basically, which is, is, is a shampoo fetish. <laughs> and then here's another one, um, axillalism, which is the desire to have sex with someone's armpit. Now, actually, a few years back, I had an encounter with someone at Exotica in Edison, New Jersey, and I think it was like 2017, where some sub walked up to me and asked me if he could lick my armpits, <laughs> right? So I said, well, actually, I've never experienced that before, so I'd be into it. So at the time, I was dating somebody who was extremely jealous if I got more attention than he did. So it was kind of interesting. But I went with it. And ah, it didn't really, f I mean, it kind of felt weird, like for some grown guy with a beard to be licking my armpit. But people took pictures and videos. And why not? It was like an, an axillary um, fetish. So it's axillism, but I, I didn't, I wouldn't even dream of letting the guy fuck my armpit. That's first of all. But I mean, if somebody wants to fuck somebody else's armpit, go for it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe it's a little hairy and it might even feel like a pussy. You never know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> That's kind of bizarre. But again, tonight's topic on the whip appeal for season two, episode one is bizarre fetishes. <laughs> so I mean, so I, I guess it is pretty bizarre if you were to say, you know? <laughs> mm. Of course, I have to uh, have a sip of coffee while I'm doing the show, of course. And um, let's see. Um, I'm not talking about that one. Oh, this one is extremely interesting. This one is amazing. I, um, I've actually kind of not done this, but maybe have done something like this where I was in a dungeon and there's a bunch of mirrors on the wall and I was actually watching myself flog and whip a submissive while they were kind of helpless on the St. Andrew's cross. And this was probably about 
2012 when I was going to this dungeon in upstate New York when I was living up there. Um, it's a, a pretty interesting one called Catoptronophilia, right? And it's spelled K A T O P. T R O N O P H I L L I A. So it's catoptronophilia, right? What it is is an interesting one. It's a fetish involving mirrors where you like to either jerk off in the mirror or watch yourself play with someone sexually or erotically in a mirror, okay? So it's a kind of interesting fetish. Think about it. Remember back in the day, they show all those dirty porn movies where they have like mirrors on the bed. Well, think about it. Mirrors on the bed in an old dirty 70s porn movie is probably based on this fetish with, you know, having erotic sex in a mirror and watching yourself, right? So think about it. Way back then, this was going on and now today there's a name for it. <laughs> I mean, actually, I was contemplating maybe getting some mirrors for, like, up in this, where my bed is, there's these, like, slanted, like, type uh, little things. I was thinking of putting, like, mirror glass on that, making it. So, yeah, I could kind of, that would be kind of maybe uh, interesting to do. Maybe I can find some, like, mirror stickers and stick them up there or something. But that'd be kind of hot. Why not? Who doesn't like watching their partner fuck them in a mirror? Hmm? So I guess it's safe to say we all have catoptronophilia in us, even if we're not into BDSM and we're a vanilla person. Now you have to excuse me a minute. Mistress is um, going to be lighting her joints while she's going to smoke it while she's doing the show. <laughs> so if you hear me pausing a moment or two, that is why. <laughs> um, mm. Think about that. Even vanilla folks... Who are, who are, you know, they have sex with their partner and they like watching them fuck them in the mirror. So the giver and the receiver, they both like it. So it's called catoptronophilia. Pretty interesting. Say that 10 times fucking fast, tongue tied. <laughs> so, <laughs> pretty interesting, right? Now, hmm. This one, I think I just so have. This, I mean, look, I have a foot fetish. I have a PVC and, um, a PVC and vinyl fetish, okay? I, I prefer, um, what's that? I, I, I'm, I'm an exhibitionist for the most part. I have a foot fetish. Um, I enjoy public play, of course, and, and humiliation. That's one of my favorites. But I also enjoy um, my guys to have long hair. So this fetish can be for male or female. And it's called trichophiliacs. So basically a trichophiliac is somebody that has an addiction or a fetish to long-haired people. <laughs> it's a long hair fetish. Kind of interesting. You know, I mean, there's all different types of, like, fetishes, so wouldn't it not surprise me that they have a fetish for long-haired people? Kind of interesting, right? I don't know. I mean, I guess it could be to some degree, but, uh, yeah. So now, the next one is, oh, I think I had one of that one, the, um, <laughs> the abesiophiliacs with the uh, orthopedic appliances, right? That was a really funny one. And the hobophilia was the sex with a homeless person or a sexual fantasy with a homeless person. Person, excuse me. Oh, well, you know they have the Amazon fetish, right? But what about calling it something else nowadays called a macrophiliac, right? Get off to giant things. Could be a woman. It could be a... Uh, uh, here, here's an interesting one that I think is kind of how this all started. If you're um, into like Godzilla or like giants, right? It's basically uh, it's to depict massive individuals engaging in sexual acts with regular sized folks. <laughs> 
That doesn't mean some Andre the Giant fan fiction either. What it could be. It could be like Godzilla-sized dicks. <laughs> so, basically, it's like I see these a lot of these, like, dirty cartoons on Twitter and things, and they have, like, these, like, beasts fucking these women, and their cocks are, like, enormous. Like, all drawn, like, big, veiny, like, stuff. I see it, like, on Twitter a lot. I see it on, like, um, Red Tube. I see it on some sissies fucking website where they show, like, these, uh, you know, depictions of these, like, little Japanime girls with pink hair and pointy ears getting fucked by these, like, big oxes with big cocks. It's kind of, and the cartoons, you know? Mm. I think they call the dirty Japanime hentai or something, I think it is, they call it. And it's uh, pretty graphic. So I guess maybe to some degree... It could involve some hentai macrophiliacs. So I guess it's kind of, um, you know, I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. Some of these fetishes are pretty bizarre. Some of them, of course, I've heard of and other ones I have not. I know about the ones involving Alex the necromancer who used to call into the show. And then um, some other ones like gerontophilia, arousal to old people. So, I mean... Like I said, <clears throat> there's a fetish for everything. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. Here's another one. Astiglatophilia, which is arousal to the thought of hellfire and damnation. <laughs> you know, when someone says go to hell, somebody might actually get off on that. So remember that the next time you tell someone to go to hell. <laughs> for stig- stigiophilia. <laughs> I can't even pronounce it again. Oh, my God. Stigiophilia, (laughs) which is kind of interesting. So look at this. I guess tonight's Whip Appeal show is really going off on the deep end for the bizarre fetishes tonight. Uh, I guess Mistress has decided that um, I would like to, to, not myself, but to educate people of different types of fetishes, including the bizarre ones. As opposed to the mundane, everyday, like, sissy cross-dresser fetish, uh, latex fetish, fetish for uh, wallet raping, cash pig, you know, pay pig fetish. Um, Financial domination is a fetish. It's not a lifestyle. Um, There are guys that will be willing to, you know, give women money just for little little bits of attention. I personally don't indulge in that fetish because to me, um, I don't know, I I work. (laughs) So I don't really need to do that. But, you know, I I do dominate in other ways with humiliation and girlfriend experience where I can dress you up from ugly duckling man to a pretty princess slut, you know, pretty much, or pretty sophisticated, trampy, wannabe cocksucker cum dump whore in a closet. Um, (laughs) Say that 10 times fast again. Oh my God. I think sometimes I talk too much, (laughs) but it's good because, you know, you get a lot of information on the show in a very uh, max allotted time, you know, I'm not sure how long I'm going to do the show for tonight, but, um, I'm definitely going to, you know, stay on till, at least try to stay on till about 9.30 tonight. Give it a little hour and a half. So, um, right now I think I'm up to almost 45 minutes. Wow, I've been talking quite a bit in those 45 minutes. (laughs) So, um, kind of interesting. Now, of course, I have my all-time favorite fetish, which I actually indulged in with a submissive many, many years ago. And, mm. I'm going to rehash a old submissive by the name of Blackmail Pig, this guy Tony. And actually, he was sent to me from another dame who i known from years yonder. And um, he had called me up on one of my uh, domination lines back, I don't know, this had to have been about, this is probably like 20 years ago now. And um, he actually... Uh, had a very bizarre fetish called a galmatophilia, which is the attraction to inanimate objects. So basically, he had a $5,000 silicone sex doll by the name of, which I actually named after myself. So the doll's name was Candy, <laughs> or Candace, so to speak. And um, 
I actually, him and I used to play around, well, he used to go on webcam and, like, I would have him, like, fuck his silicone sex doll in very, like, discriminating positions. And I would take photos of him and hold on to them for, like, a blackmail file, right? So, now, mind you, he consented to this. He wanted to be blackmailed because he knew that nobody knew his secret but me and him, right? And... Of course, here's like a, I think he was like 53 or 54 years old, not married, never had any children, and he had really nobody in his life except for this five, $6,000 silicone sex doll. It was called a real doll. They actually still make them nowadays. I'm sure his model is uh, pretty old by now. She's <laughs> If she was alive, she'd be a senior citizen. <laughs> Maybe maybe then now he'll become a, a gerontophilia. He'll have a, a, a fetish for old people. <laughs> but anyway, um, he consented to consensual blackmail. So basically, I would have regular conversations with him on webcam where I would like tell him like how I wanted him to behave during the week. And he was instructed to call me like daily, keep contact with me, that sort of stuff. Plus, you know... We'd play a little game like where like he would get he would make me angry and I would like threaten to call his like mother with pictures of him with his doll and he would like totally get off on it. It was all fake, but it was like fun, you know, like honestly, it was like having a little bit of edge play uh, back on the back burner. Edge play is when you kind of do some sort of fetish role playing with someone where you keep them hanging on the edge of their seat like a cliffhanger. So, you know, keep him fucking engaged, but keep him scared shitless at the same fucking time. So that's when you consensually blackmail someone. You, the both of you enter a blackmail uh, consensual contract and there's like, you know, details and all sorts of stuff in it. And <clears throat> He agreed to it. So I blackmailed him for like three years. It was a lot of fun, let me tell you. <laughs> he used to, I used to scare the living shit out of this guy, and he absolutely loved it. He would send me emails. He would send me gifts in the mail, thanking me for scaring the living shit out of him. Like, that's what he wanted. That's why this woman sent him to me, because she knew that I was going to be able to really get inside of the mind and fuck this blackmail pig like a mental mind fuck. So, so, and I did. And believe it or not, like many, many, many years ago, I had a different website back then. And I actually plastered his photos of him with his doll in sexual positions. And it was very funny because all these other dames went on there and saw and they were like, oh my God, I've heard about him. He's like a legend. He only plays with specific women and, and like... He's obviously he bounced from dumb to dumb, and actually a good friend of mine, Goddess Amberly, she also blackmailed him too. So he's he's a pretty well known black consensual blackmail submissive that goes from dom to dom. And he, but he did say, uh, I think a, a a woman interviewed him like years and years ago, and he did say that the best mistress who ever dominated him with blackmail was me. I was the one who, because let me tell you, I. <laughs> I used to call his job and, and like, you know, like call him up and ask for him. And they're like, oh, who's this? I'm like, oh, tell him Candy's on the phone. And then he would, he would be at work and he'd freak out. He'd answer the phone and be like, oh, God, what? Like, so, like, it was pretty funny. Like, I, I did it for a few years. So then um, we ended up not doing blackmail any longer because he said that he just – physically couldn't do it like his job and his mom and his mom was sick and so I let him go and I haven't heard from him in years and nobody else has either so that's how we know he's like officially done <laughs> but he he was like going to all these different domains to try to find like the perfect blackmail <laughs> like just, but boy was he was he surprised when he he met with me online that was pretty funny mm. actually I had a. Uh, brought him over to this other website that me and these other dames were like going on and it was quite comical he uh he 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 made a, a good bunch of friends on there and these other submissives and then he got them all into the the doll fetish so they had like some group for a while too so yeah the agalmotophilia is the attraction to inanimate objects such as dolls statues and mannequins pretty interesting right 
So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm really not into, like, having sex with dolls. Thank you very much. I mean, I know Slayer has a song called Playing With Dolls, but, like, <laughs> I'd play with a doll, but not fuck a doll, you know? <laughs> Here's another um, bizarre and interesting fetish, xylophilia. One may kind of want to try to guess what that is. Xylophilia. Hmm, interesting. You know, xylo, like a xylophone. So xylophilia is the arousal to wood. These people would be so happy to be carpenters. I've heard of this fetish where people have gone into like Home Depot and Lowe's and they go down like the lumber aisle and they just take like a big whiff of the wood and they have like an instant erection in their pants. I've seen people do this. So like, like in particular, carpenter friends. Okay. So I always thought it was kind of bizarre and I just thought maybe like they saw like a woman in there and they're like, and I had asked them because few weeks ago I was talking to a few of them about bizarre fetishes for the show and they said well you know like they had said something that like they like the smell of wood and I said well actually there's a fetish about that it's called xylophilia it's the arousal to wood so maybe they if they love the smell of lumber (laughs) they love the smell of lumber I wonder if they're going to rub their wood on the piece of wood, okay? This is, again, stemming to the lithophilia with the people fucking the headstones and the stones and the, you know, like, stones in general, rocks or whatever, right? (laughs) Oh, my God, this show is becoming more bizarre and more bizarre as I keep talking, but that's a good thing. That's kind of like what I was trying to do for tonight's show anyway. (laughs) And, of course, Mistress's uh, laugh which I, um, a lot of people tell me they've missed my laugh, so it's good that I'm laughing on air again. And, um, so, okay, the, the, (laughs) I don't know, there's a whole bunch of, like, shit on this page, so let's see, what was it, we did the frauderism, the necrophilia, oh, here's, um, hold on, the spectrophiliacs, they are riled up by ghosts. Now, I don't know if I've heard this, but I've heard of people talking about succubuses coming to see them while they're sleeping and sucking them off, and that's how that you have a wet dream, okay? So, is it a succubus fetish, or is it a spectrophilia, does, or does that make you a spectrophiliac that you're having sex with a ghost? <laughs> I swear it takes all fucking kinds. It really does. It takes all kinds. All kinds. <laughs> oh, my lordy, lordy. But I do have to say one thing. Speaking of having sex with ghosts, um, I do have to say that I really appreciate Spunk Lube still being a sponsor for our show after all these years. I mean, you've, you know, you've been sponsoring the show since, I think, 2000 and. 17 even I think so it's a long time 17 18 19 20 six years so thank you for being a sponsor for our show for six years spunk lube so check them out spunklube.com they have the best lubricant for sexual play and whether you're using dildos or you're having sex with your lover or whatever they have an array of different uh, they have silicone hybrid. They have a uh, colored pink and green. They also, which are all silicone, by the way. Uh, they're water based. They also have a natural oil lubricant for people who may be allergic to silicone or don't want to use silicone. This one is edible. It's a light green. It's black with the light green letters on the bottle, and it's made with coconut, avocado, and uh, flaxseed oil. I think it is. It's completely edible. So. I've tasted it. tastes pretty good. You can even use some of these as moisturizers, like lotion, too. So, um, I use Spunk Lube quite a bit, and it's pretty damn good. <laughs> so, so thank you, Spunk Lube, for, be con- for continued to be a sponsor for the Whip Appeal Show and BDSM Alive Radio Network. So, thank you very much. Um, what else? Uh, I'm going to try to be a little bit more active on social media this year. I most likely will be attending 
um, upcoming Exotica in Edison this year. I'm not sure when it is. I, I know Sir Lorenzo had told me, but, you know, I forget things. So um, make sure they have a couple of them coming up. So if you're interested in going to any of the other ones, you can go to ExoticaExpo.com and you can see when they're coming. I think they're going to like Miami soon. I'm not sure when. It may be like June, July or or I'm not sure of the dates, but you have to go and check that out at least because I, I will be at the one in Edison, New Jersey this coming year and uh, for 2023, of course. Like I've been going for the past, oh God, I've been going to Exotica for a long time, probably since like 2009, maybe something like that, or 2010 or 2011, somewhere in, somewhere in one of those years. I forget exactly when, but um, for a long time, for probably like over 10 years now. So, um, but I'm pretty excited to see all the different things and the vendors and people and, oh, I have a lot of friendly people there. Oh, hallelujah, my phone is finally charged. I plugged it in like a while ago, and it just sent me a thingy saying it was completely charged. Because if a caller had called, and I didn't want my phone to die in the middle of the phone call, you know, so. And, um, <clears throat> so I don't know, I hear all these different fetishes about a cougar fetish. Uh, there are young guys that have cougar fetishes. They will only date and play and have sex with older women. <laughs> I don't know if it's more of a fetish or a lifestyle for some of them. Um, I know, I guess with me and my young boyfriend, um, it's a lot, his life. He prefers older women. Uh, but there are guys out there that only prefer older women to do like sexual things with, and then they, you know, have younger women on the side. To me, that's kind of fucked up. Why would you do that to somebody? Um, you know, but anyway, um, we don't have to indulge on that subject, but there are people who have cougar fetishes. There are fetishes for, um, certain materials. There are fetishes for, um, diapers, a diaper fetish, this ABDL, the adult baby diaper loving fetish, which is kind of bizarre. There's an age play fetish. There's fetishes for all sorts of things. I mean, you ever hear the saying, Everyone has a fetish. What's yours? <laughs> okay. I mean, <laughs> that is pretty much, um, you know, like what everybody does anyway, if you think about it. Even vanilla people, they, they they claim they're not really into BDSM, but yet they when they talk about relationships with, like, their significant other or, you know, people in the past, they always say, oh, I had this guy want to spank me once. And I'm like, well, did you try it? And they're like, well, yes and no. And I'm like, well, what do you mean yes and no? Well, I, I, I got spanked once or twice, but I really didn't like it. So then I started spanking him and then I really liked that. So these are the, van like I would say, corrupting the vanillas, right? Like you want to take a vanilla person and corrupt them and turn them into a kinky person so they can have a better sex life, <laughs> you know? Like, so I don't know. I, I'm I'm all for that, I guess, to some degree. Uh, why not making... I've been told I've made uh, kinky couples have more sex than they've ever had. Then I've been told that I've helped vanilla people who are new to the lifestyle, so they're not really, they're kind of like semi-vanilla, um, about how they, you know, have better sex lives in general, they've learned things from me, from the shows, which is pretty awesome, actually, um, this is kind of why I do these shows, to teach people about different things that you can do with your partner, that are, of course, SSC and RAC, which is safe, sane, and consensual, and RAC, which is risk-aware, consensual kink, so, when you have these practices involved, when you have someone like a new couple who's new to BDSM or new to any types of fetishism or sexual fetishism or any types of, you know, erotic adult play, you kind of want to make sure that you and your partner are on the same page with what each of you has limits. And you want to make sure you use a safe word. So, of course, you know, I always refer back to that because that's always the, the, the BDSM aspect is always going to be in the show. It's just going to change a little bit. But, 
Of course, I'm going to stem back to uh, my roots, of course, and talk about a little bit of protocol in the next couple of weeks also. So for people who are just churning into the new season, even though we have, I still have a lot of, I have pretty much all the shows from last season up. Um, The only thing I had done was I had changed a lot of the stuff on the network. Like I got rid of all the old shows with me and my ex co host and that stuff, but I kept one or two. And actually one of the shows that I had kept was with a good friend, goddess Sadie Hawkins. She actually was killed by her submissive. Um, and then the submissive actually had committed suicide. So I leave that show up because she was a well known woman in the industry, a very close personal friend of mine, and what a tragedy would happen to her. So I did keep that show up on the network for, because people should never forget about her, okay? She was a very good, and let me tell you, when I had her on, she had a ball on my show. And actually, matter of fact, some of her, her leather family had contacted me through the past few years that she's gone now and they said that they were happy and thankful that I still had that to keep her memory alive so that's why I never took the show down because she was a good close friend sister femdom sister of mine that you know so again when you're going to meet with someone you want to thoroughly you know do a background check on them to make sure that you're getting involved into a safe sane relationship because this type of shit could happen and you know it happens quite a bit actually like not only with her I've heard other stories in the past where other submissives were killing other submissives because they were jealous and like all kinds of shit so I mean me thank god I still have my little old slave Paula who's like 75 years old and wouldn't hurt a fly okay um you know, I don't see him as much as I'd like to, but we, we do text and talk on the phone. Um, he has a bit of, you know, stuff going on. He was like having surgery and, you know, his family had a lot of shit going on. So I let him deal with that. And, um, but recently I just posted some photos of him and I from ADN when we went back in like January of 2013. That was a lot of fun. That's when I went to me and myself and another Dame were, excuse me, doing some um, live uh, shows on stage at uh, The Joint, which was in, um, it's called The Joint. It's in Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, we were doing some uh, shows for like some whipping techniques or something on the show for AVN. And myself and my submissive and some other people were on stage doing it. It was pretty cool, actually. I was much heavier in those photos, but I figured, you know what? It's part of who I am, so why not put it back on FetLife, you know? And um, so, Slave Paula, if you're listening, I posted the two photos of us from AVN up there, which I think I still have the ones from La Domaine on there also. But, um, of course, Mistress looks totally different then till now. (laughs) <laughs> I was much heavier. I was considered a BBW back then. And I didn't smoke as I didn't really smoke as much pot as I do now then. So I mean, yeah, I'm always like smoking. You probably hear me smoking on the radio show. But then again, there are people that have a smoking fetish, okay? And it's just called a smoking fetish. There's no smokeophilia. There's no like smoke smoke ananiac. There's no, there's none of that. It's just called a smoking fetish. <laughs> you know, you ever notice like a lot of the, well, think about it, a paraphilia is a fetish. All, there's so many, they, like the typical real word for fetish is called a paraphilia, okay? So paraphilias, fetishes, then you have, you know, um, the iliacs, the philias, you know, the (laughs) macrophiliacs, necrophiliacs, you know, like that kind of stuff. (laughs) Just no smoke, a smokeophiliac. I don't know. Maybe I just made up one. (laughs) A smokeophiliac. That might be kind of interesting. I don't know. But I've done a lot of smoking sessions where I've had subs tied to chairs, blindfolded while I put like cigarettes in their mouth and I make them smoke a cigarette while I'm smoking a cigarette. 
But, you know, of course, I only do it to people who really smoke. I mean, who have a smoking fetish. I'm not going to be, like, putting cigarettes in people's mouths who don't smoke. I mean, that's not the, you know, doing that. Or I had this one guy one time who had a gas mask fetish. And I used to have a Polish gas mask with a respirator hose. And I used to kind of, like... He would put it on, and I would blow pot smoke and cigarette smoke up the up the hose. <laughs> and then um, other times, me and another dame had him, like, uh, mummified to a pole at some play party. Oh, no, he was mummified to a chair, and the hose was, like, maybe a couple, like my friend uh, Lady Candace. She got a, a, a different attachment for it, so the hose was longer. So he was mummified to a chair that couldn't get up. He was wearing a diaper and had a vibrator in his ass that I was controlling with a remote control. And I was handing it to people at this play party, so he was tortured by everybody there. But he wanted this type of play. This guy was a fucking... He was a complete fetishist. He was into mummification. Um, I would mummify him. I actually, there's a video of me mummifying him on YouTube. If you look up Mistress Candy uh, Mummification Exotica, it should pop up. And this was done live at Exotica for like like thousands of fucking people to watch. So I did this like years ago. So this guy at the time, I was like mummifying him. He's into mummification and he also like hoods and masks. Sensor, he was a heavy sensory deprivation type of uh, submissive. So believe me, I did a lot of stuff with him. I mummified him. I put a gas mask on him. We, Me and uh, all these women at this party like blew smoke up his hose. Women fought it in his hose. <laughs> I mean, it was fucking like... Every sort of obnoxious smell that you could possibly imagine. Um, Now, mind you, he was bull gagged and had a chastity device on and he was mummified with a with a vibrator, a wireless vibrator shoved up his ass. Actually, I think I think there was a wire. We we put a the tape around. (laughs) I have to look for these photos. These are pretty funny, actually. And um we basically, like, all these women, like, women sat on him like he was a chair, like, while he was mummified like that. They were smoking cigarettes and weed and blowing the smoke in his respirator hose. Um, he was fucking, they were controlling the remote while they were sitting on, it was, let me tell you, he had a fucking ball. I told him, I said, we're going to a BDSM party and you're the, the fun. He goes, what do you mean? I said, oh, wait till we get there. And... I had owned him at the time, so it was actually um, quite an interesting... His name was Mum Man, that was his name, and he was featured on a lot of these uh, uh, locked, uh, ma- locked, mature metal-type websites for, like, you know, like, Houdini-type, like, sensory deprivation. <laughs> like, he was... People did, like, articles about him. He actually marched in the Folsom Street Fair one year. Um, so he's been around, this guy. So I've done things with him. I've actually, uh, there was another fella who I've played with in the past called the Human Floor Pete Tino. He's actually in the Guinness Book of World Records. Um, When I first met him, actually, it was about 2013 or 2014, early, like April. He said he was going to Exotica and he wanted to meet up with me so I could stick needles in his back and walk on his face. (laughs) So I was like, okay. So... Actually, I'm still friends with him. So, Pete, if you're listening, kudos to you. People should check him out. Look him up on the internet. He's called The Human Floor. He actually is in the Guinness Book of World Records for allowing 10 women weighing over 1,000 pounds step on his body and his face for a while. Like, at least probably, I don't know, like a good like minute or so, and he didn't get crushed. So, I mean, look. And it, it, there was... These women were big women. They they like they had to have been like three, four hundred apiece, like these women who stepped on him. So it was like pretty uh crazy. <laughs> and uh he always told me that if I ever got my own house he wanted to come and live in the floor. He wanted me to cut out a, a 
a thing in the floor so I could put a doormat on his face. So when I come home from work or wherever, I would stomp on his face and clean, like rub my dirty shoes on his face. Now, I used to laugh at this, and I still do because it is quite hilarious. But the fact is, this was his personal fetish. He loved to be trampled by women. He, he, he used to work at some... Um, I think he told me he used to work at some like a Halloween park and he'd be in dirt. Like actually he was on a couple of shows and he actually talked about this. Look like when you look him up, you'll see all the stuff about him. He actually um, was in this dirt pile at this screen park. And when people would step on his face, he would say he would say like obnoxious comments to them. Like, <laughs> And he used to tell me the stories. I actually think it was a video that I saw of him online somewhere. It was really funny. So, I mean, I've had the pleasure in my 32-year career of being a dominatrix. I have the, I've had the pleasure of, like, really working with some really interesting folks, I have to say. Like, the human floor. And, uh, you know, I met, like, all these, like, famous musicians and stuff. You know, like, a lot of these, um, you know, like, I'm not going to name any names right now. But, you know, like, uh, all right, Steve Zing from Danzig. And, you know, I know, like, some people from Prong and, like, Tommy Victor and Megan and, and you know, uh, like, Doyle and, you know, Alex Wolfman's story and all these, like, famous. But I had Tim McMurtry from MOD on my show a few years back. I had... uh this band called Agents of Aggression on. They were a, a Jersey metal band. Um, I've had a lot of bands on here, actually, um, in, in the past, and different musicians and all sorts of people, you know. So, I mean, I know, like, a lot of the old type of negative members. Um, it, a lot of them I'm friends with, which is really awesome. And, uh, you know, and, and whatnot. So, I mean, I've done a lot of things in my career. And um, it's pretty cool, the people that I've come into contact with. And actually, it's kind of funny. This December, I went to that metal show um, in Dingbats and saw Don Jameson and, and Jim Florentine and Eddie Trunk. And this was the first time they actually saw me without my mistress clothes on because that night it was like zero below outside. And... Steve Zing from Danzig, of course, was working there. It was, like, cool to see him. He was awesome as always. And, you know, it was cool because he's a friend of mine, and I hadn't seen him in a couple of years. And he's like, don't be a stranger around here, you know. And I was like, no, of course, I'll be back. And But it was funny because Dawn Jameson goes, wow, mistress, you look totally different without your, your mistress costume on. <laughs> this is what he said to me. He goes, wow. He goes, uh, I'm pretty impressed. You're pretty sexy with regular clothes on too. It was it was very funny actually, but it was a really good show. It was a good night. I I saw my friend Mezzy Shredder there, um, and his fiance Meredith, and um, I had my a couple of my friend you know Dave was with me and some other people. So it was really cool, and um, I got to see all the people like the owners of Dingbats who I hadn't seen in a couple of years. So it was pretty awesome. And I'm looking forward to going back there. Actually, April 1st, I'm going to be going there to see uh, my friend Veets is in a band. And I, they're called Stillborn Monster Babies. It's a Misfits tribute band. And they're playing there April 1st at Dingbats at uh, 620 Van Hooten Avenue in Clifton, New York. And I am definitely going to that show. It is going to be one hell of a night. I love the Misfits, of course. I've seen them twice in my life. I'm a big Danzig fan. Of course, I'm friends with the, some of the Danzig members, too, which is pretty awesome. So, Steve Zing, if you're listening, uh, I'm getting excited to hear your new Black 29 album as well as some new Danzig stuff, too. So, I'm getting excited about that. <laughs> and... um and because I heard that Danzig is going on tour this summer, so I'm pretty excited. Hope you guys come back to the New York area because I or Jersey. I'd like to go and see them, see you guys. And um, I don't know. So I think I'm gonna maybe, maybe, maybe say good night for the evening because I've been chatting quite a bit, and uh, I think uh, I did a a, a really lengthy thing on bizarre fetishes this evening. So look, email is a, if you want to email mistress a question, you could email me to bdsmaliveradio at gmail.com or you could email me personally, mistresscandy1969 at gmail.com. 
Or you can hit me up on my social media like most of you folks do, where you send me all kinds of uh, interesting stuff. Now, I'm kind of annoyed because my when my Instagram got taken down, I had a lot of emails in there from people about top, you know, like what they wanted me to discuss on the show. So if you're listening to the show tonight, please resend them to at the real mistress candy 69 on Instagram. You can private message me. You can send them there. Um, uh, I was quite fucking annoyed because like I said, Instagram has fucking done this to me three times already and it's quite annoying. So, um, again, I'm looking forward to having a brand new season with everybody here. I'm hope you enjoyed listening to my show tonight and, uh, Stay kinky, my friends. (laughs) And, of course, the show is now on Thursday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So, remember that time slot. No longer Fridays, but you can still catch a show, uh, you know, replay on Friday, of course. But the new show time slot for the live show is Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. So, I want to thank you all for listening to my show about bizarre fetishes on the BDSM Live Radio Network on the Whip Appeal Show, hosted by, of course, myself, Mistress Candy 69 So thanks for listening, and I hope to hear some good feedback from everybody. And uh, I will catch you same bat time and same bat channel next week. So thanks a lot for listening, and have a great evening, everyone. Good night.